shareholders in banks that have negative capital. They, they don't own banks. The, banks. the banks are dead banks. The capital has been wiped out. So um, in theory, they own nothing. But what we've tried to do um, is to ensure that in recapitalizing the banks, we leave them with a stake. And I think they don't understand that. Okay, what if this was not government coming in? They would have nothing. What, 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 what are you talking about voting rights in a bank with negative shareholders funds of minus 200 billion or minus 300 billion naira? What does that mean? It's been wiped out. Now, Amcon will purchase non-performing loans and all the recoveries, basically the benefit goes to current shareholders because it's their capital back, okay? Um, if there is a need to inject more money, Amcon will inject capital. Now that injection can take the form of ordinary shares, it can take the form of preference shares, it's going to be done within the context of merger and acquisition discussions, and um, we, will, we are flexible as to what instrument Amcon uses, and we would listen to both parties. Um, Amcon is not primarily interested in taking advantage of the condition of the banks to maximize profit. Okay, but it is uh, very much interested in making sure that it takes a position that it feels it has a very good chance of recovering. Uh, most likely what would happen is that depending on the amount of the injection, certainly there will be dilution, but the level of dilution would not be the kind of dilution you would get if an investment bank was coming in. What scenarios can we anticipate? More so because we know, like I said, new, index, new capital would come in. So post-transaction, so to speak, where would Amcon, how much will Amcon be holding in this, what stake? It, it varies from bank to bank. Um, in some banks, after non-performing loans are bought, the, um, the whole, it may not be a huge one. Um, for example, if a lot of the loans are backed by collateral that is not um, stock market collateral, and therefore collateral that has not lost a lot of value, you probably find that you re recover a significant part of the loans. Um, if, on the other hand, um, these are loans that are principally um, say share-backed loans, and um, if they were booked when the market was at the top, okay, then uh, clearly what the banks get would not be anywhere near the size of the hole that they have in their books, and therefore the amount that Amcon injects will be bigger. So by how much existing shareholders are diluted, uh, it's a function of how much money Amcon puts in relative to the size of the balance sheet of the bank. So, some are arguing that that's nationalization, more so because Amcon is owned by the federal government. Well, it, it, it is owned um, in the end. Um, Amcon does this and then takes the bank into a partnership or helps the bank secure a partner. So that bank is not a nationalized bank. Um, the government, even indirectly through Amcon, is at best a minority shareholder of a combined entity or um, of the same entity with other investors because you have cases where it's private equity firms that are coming in and they're, and they're making bids for 60-70% uh, of the institutions. So Amcon will simply be owning a part of the remaining 30-40%. Um, having said that, um, they obviously have the option of not allowing Amcon in and then having the bank handed over to NDIC uh, for, um, for liquidation if they don't have the money to put in. Lastly, let's, let's discuss the new banking policies. And of course, November 15th is a significant date in that regard. Um, what changes do you anticipate in the banking landscape given the new banking rules with regards to recapitalization and the, the scope of banking business for depending on what the bank um, and, and elects to, to, to do? Well, we've received, I think, two banks who have written in to say that they would like to exit um, non-bank business totally and basically spin off the subsidiaries. And we have no objections to that. Uh, we're expecting other banks to come, and some would uh, have indicated that they will go for a holding company structure um, in which they would retain the bank, but also um, the shareholders would still retain interest in um, other businesses um, like insurance. And again, we have no objections so long as we are very clear that there are firewalls uh, between those businesses and the capital and um, depositors' funds of the bank will not be used uh, for the purpose of um, setting up 
um, or, or, or funding the or, or funding those businesses. So. Um, there will be a lot of flexibility on our part. We're letting the banks and their shareholders decide exactly how they want to respond um, to, the, to the guidelines. And they have 18 months uh, within which to move to compliance. We'll also need to assist the banks um, with the FIRS because there are some tax issues um, re uh, relating to the hold co structure um, on double taxation. I think um, the FIRS has indicated that they're very willing uh, to listen to us and to make whatever adjustments need to be made. Um, to the tax laws to make this possible.